to soldier on fairly fast as well. I'll be getting signals from over here fairly soon. Uh, thanks very much for inviting me along to, to this um, event. Uh, the issue of fire is very important it's, uh, to me. It's been, I've been involved in this area for about 25 years. Uh, and I'm just going to flick on. Key item is the challenge of the reuse of existing buildings. And when you come to fire, you think it's very absolute and you can do this and you can't do that. Um, we have to look at it a little bit more carefully than that. And I'm going to bring you through some of the issues that are important in this area to me. So first of all, the safety of the residents have to come first. So you can't have a building where, where, where you're going to have a, a problem for the people in it, if you can. Um, there are a few items there, I have a few pictures to go with those, so I'm just going to click on some. So I come along to a building and find a burnt out, this particular house, a person died in that house. So you, you go in and you look at the building and you see uh, that it's important that the safety of the person comes first. You find then that uh, very important buildings get burnt down uh, due to, to, to issues. I'll just pick a, a random picture of, of a historic building burning. Um, you have to make uh, big efforts to, to try and tie in your fire safety and your historic building together when you are actually trying to uh, get the safety into the building. And you have to have uh, an appropriate design for the building. It can be from, from something very simple uh, down to a quite detailed computer analysis. Just a picture here of computer analysis which, which has been done. And also it's important that um, you have an appropriate uh, fire safety solution of the building as well. Um, all of those things come in a mix. Uh, there's no particular one that has to come out ahead. You have to try and work on them together. And I'm going to bring you through uh, some of the issues that, that, uh, that I would use. First of all, there, there are quite a lot of guides available. And you have to understand the project, you have to understand the conservation, and you have to also understand the fire safety. You can't uh, do them uh, individually, come up with a conservation solution, and then say, that's grand, let's impose fire safety on it. And the same thing would apply with the, with the disability access, uh, which we just discussed there a moment ago. So it's important that you, you do take it in a holistic way, and that's what we do. So the legislative background, um, I just put these in, these will be on the paper, but uh, as, as prior to 1981, um, you didn't have anything at all really in fire safety. Uh, the Fire Services Act came in, and then later came the, the building regulations in, in uh, 1991. Um, what's important for you to know too about the regulations is that they're split into different levels. You've got the acts, You've got the regulations and you've got the technical guidance document. And you'll find when you're dealing with the professionals and, and with the regulatory authority, very often these are mixed up. And something that would come out of the technical guidance document is deemed as being, you have to do it, while it's purely technical guidance and a way of resolving the problem. You've got regulations and then you've got the act. So when we're looking at the design of, of um, fire safety, we look through these and take into account the fact that something in the technical guidance document may be suitable for a new building but would be totally inappropriate for an existing building. Building regulations, existing buildings. Um, in the technical guidance document it says where works are carried out in accordance with this guidance, this will pre passio indicate compliance with these requirements. And that's a very good thing to have. But with a historic building, you very often can't use the guidance, technical guidance document and you take the alternative guidance uh, it states very clearly, it does not preclude the use of alternative guidance. And um, it also makes very clear in the tech guidance document that the advice given may be unduly restrictive or impractical, and that's the case very often, and that alternative approaches based on principles contained in the document may be used, or in other documents as well. So when you're doing a, a submission, you have to keep this in mind. And uh, um, I'm very happy sometimes when I'm working with fire officers who understand this and work with you to try and get a, an optimum solution. Um, in an existing building as well, um, if you have a national mon monument pre-1700, you don't need to comply with building regulations at all, so you're going in in a discussion mode uh, to come with the best optimum solution. Um, Fire Services Act is still there, you've got health and safety, so you have to ensure that your building is, is safe and that you have proven it. 
and you have to take reasonable measures to guard against the outbreak of fire. That's what comes under health and safety, even if all the other regulations are not relevant to you. And uh, it's hard to read from this. Uh, the, the onus is on the applicant to show that the alternative solutions to fire safety enhancement here have been fully explored. That's also noted in the uh, architectural protection guidelines for planning authorities. So all the guidance is there. The guidance is is to help you to work to get the best solution for your building. Uh, so I, I flew through that. It will be in the paper. Um, you could do an hour on that alone. But what I want to do is get onto pictures to show you from an architectural point of view of practical guidance. And uh, we're starting with adequate means of escape. So very often I'll come to a building and find that there are a lot of issues with the building which are already built into it over many years, causing uh, obstructions. In this example here, office uh, uh, storage put into the fire escape routes. And uh, you can do a lot of work just by clearing out these items. Uh, they're not items of, of any great issue. You can, you can um, remove the uh, later additions. This works very well with the conservation idea as well. You'll find uh, services have been introduced into the building really nearly over the years and expanded. All of these can be cleaned up. Um, from my investigation of fires that have occurred, you find a lot of them occur in a place like this where boards go on fire, the fire spreads through the building. So uh, by upgrading electrical systems and maybe protecting them in the right locations, you're inc increasing safety and it helps you on means of escape. Um, uh, on this thing far as you can see the results of that you see here a smoke layer coming down in the, in the uh, corridor. A door was closed in a room off that corridor and there was no damage in the room. You can see the difference. Uh, that door was a standard uh, flush door with no fire rating and standard glass overhead with no fire rating. So what I do is I, I would go to Fart and say we've got this historic Georgian door. Um, we can make it work fairly well. We can't prove it is the same as the new fire door, but look at the examples. The outside and the inside. This is the room where the door was open. There's no, no comparison. <clears throat> so the first thing you have to learn is in looking after a building, close your doors. And uh, stop the fire from spreading. You see the damage, uh, this is a room now where there was a fire within the room at this is a Victorian building. <clears throat> it's got cornicing and uh, lath and plaster ceiling. It was a fairly severe fire. The, uh, the curtains and everything else is melted, but the ceiling survived. The fire in this case didn't go beyond the room. Just typical examples of damage to, to panelling doors where it does go through. Um, other issues of problems is wiring, going back to that. If you can get back to basics, Try and get your wiring right, stop the risks and, and, uh, of uh, a source of fire. Fire detection alarm systems <clears throat> very important in buildings to, to look at. Um, you can use radio systems. And uh, these don't need wiring around the building. They can be put in very quickly. You have to fly through these. All you have is a detector in the ceiling. You can take it down if you use new technology in a few years. It's totally reversible. Very cost effective. Um, you can use uh, beams in churches and uh, just have a reflector in one, one uh, antenna, take it out later if there's a new system. You can use uh, sniffer units as well. In this church, there's a sniffer unit system. Uh, fire doors, uh, you can have uh, concealed door closers. Um, you can use battery powered um, hold open devices without any wiring. You can also wire them if it's possible. Um, problems with the uh, fire lobby is a big one. And uh, even uh, just creating a lobby which doesn't go up to the corner thing as an intermeasure can be looked at. Uh, escape lifts, uh, another big area of, of issue. We won't have time to go into the details of these. Um, guarding on uh, historic churches, getting things done uh, neatly with glass. Um, improving escape routes in churches, uh, just adjustments in the seating layout sometimes can be enough. Uh, adjustments in, in the way you use the balconies. You can have a building which a fire officer can also have to close you down, a little bit of negotiation, a bit of management, 
uh, working with the escape routes, uh, door directions, and your back business. <coughs> Uh, I mentioned about the panel doors, um, windows, smoke vents, a big problem. Uh, this is stairs where a fire got into the stairs. The smoke is coming down. It's reached uh, about shoulder height. Uh, smoke vents, we put them in quite a lot of buildings. Uh, uh, it's possible. In that particular case there, the smoke vent is hidden up in the parapet. I can't see it, but inside it's another smoke vent in a, in a Georgian building. Uh, fitting of fire escapes. In some buildings it's possible to put them in uh, uh, and do a modern intervention. Uh, historic building uh, pre-1700. The doorway was very narrow. It doesn't apply with any technical guidance. Uh, we met the fire officer. He wasn't the smallest of men. Um, he said he could get through the door, so there was no problem. <laughs> that was being practical in a historic building. Uh, hanging up doors to open outwards can be done with a bit of care. So the summary really, um, I'm not going to go through the summary again, but you'll have it in your papers. I've really said that the summary is to work at what you're doing. Get the right solution. Fire spread is another area uh, within building of linings. Um, an example again, back to uh, a corridor with plasterboard walls and ceilings. Um, it got very hot in there, everything melted. You can see everything's hanging off the walls but the plasterboard survived. So historic buildings with uh, plaster finishes, lath and plaster, have great resistance. Timber panelling, uh, it's possible to provide fire rating on those if you have to. And big timber beams and buildings have a, a known fire um, spread rate on it and they can stay up a long time longer than steel beams. <coughs> fire spread structure. Um, uh, Victorian building, fire, um, the ceiling has survived. Uh, there was a severe fire in here, people got out, they called the fire brigade and it uh, was put out. Where the doors weren't open, were open, the fire spread and you can see the damage uh, in another building gets very severe. Um, in that particular case the ceilings collapsed and then it's too late. Um, but it's very interesting to inspect these buildings, look at the results of fire, and then go back to when you're designing to try and deal with them. What I'm trying to do is shock you into, in a way, thinking about the basic things, um, uh, having a good plan, uh, planning and dealing with your risks of fire. This is where the fire got through the ceiling, got into the roof. The fire brigade arrived just at that time. Um, if they hadn't been any later, the whole building would have been gone. Uh, fire breaks in buildings. I come and see this an awful lot in buildings. First thing I do would be invest in fire breaks, <coughs> build up the wall in stud or in, in, in material to just stop the fire from spreading. And that's the case there was just uh, some blocks put in. Very cheap to do. That's why you need to get good advice when you're inspecting your building and you have to go to every location. This in a church, we put in fire breaks into the roof. Uh, the worst thing possible in a historic building is that a fire spreads through the whole roof and the whole building goes. Um, you can just see the background there, a very simple fire break system put in in the attic. We also put in walkways that we can to allow for access for servicing. Uh, historic ceilings, if you can get the floorboards up, it's possible to upgrade above them without any damage. And this is the fire system put in uh, between the joists. Almost finished. <coughs> My own. Uh, paint and ceilings can be done in some cases. Smoke venting can be looked at. You can use fire rated glass as an outside layer uh, in addition to the existing windows. This is where panelling, uh, fires got in behind panelling and spread through the building. You have to try and avoid that by having cavity barriers. You can see examples of where cabling has been put in, no fire rating put in. Big risk, fire spreads up along the cables and through the whole building. Uh, you'll see this in every building you go and visit. This is where the fire doors have, have, um, have worked, but you can see the smoke starting to go through above the frame. So the, it's likely there that they didn't uh, fire stop between the frame and the wall. A very simple thing to do when you're constructing the building, but hard to supervise. External fire spread, um, less important, but if you, if you can get windows breaking uh, uh, from a fire next door, I'm going to keep going here. 
access for fire service. It's a big problem in historic areas. You have to go and talk to the fire officer. Hopefully pick the one who is most interested in historic building to help you out. Uh, source of water supply are important country areas. That's why I showed that picture there. Vehicle access, you have to do it. It's all back to management. No point having fire brigade arrive and there's no water for them to put out fire. So general points, uh, you do have to have a fire safety plan. Protection is better than, than cure. Um, you have to use a bit of common sense in each building you're doing. Um, you have to be very <coughs> thorough. Uh, one size doesn't fit all. So thanks.